Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're going to be continuing on with our whole move semantics journey. If you guys have not seen the other videos in this kind of little mini series, then definitely check them out. I'll have one linked up there that's going to be about move semantics in general. But there's also another video about L values and R values. So if you're new to this whole moving journey, make sure that you check those videos out because they're going to be important for what we'll be discussing today. So, so far we've, we've basically learned the the gist and all of the basics of move semantics, what it means to actually be able to move one object into another. However, we haven't covered a crucial part of that, or should I say two crucial parts. And instead of making two videos, one on each topic, I figured I'd combine them into this video because they're not particularly complicated topics and I think we can just get them done in one video. And that is STD move. So what is that function? What does it do? When do we use it? When do we need to use it? And then also something called the move assignment operator. And this is specifically an assignment operator that we use when we want to move an object into an existing object. So we've covered move constructors or a move constructor, that's what we did in the last episode. However, what we haven't covered is what happens if we, instead of constructing a new object, we want to move an existing object into another existing object. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you guys have not heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where millions of creative and curious people come together into a brilliant community to learn something new. They've got thousands of amazing classes on pretty much any creative topic you can think of. And one of the best parts, well, at least in my opinion, is that the classes are all so short. All the videos are so bite-sized that you can actually watch them in the spare five minutes you might have throughout your day, which I think is amazing. Lately, I've been wanting to maximize my productivity and motivation, and they've got a lot of excellent classes on that topic, as well as general business classes, which is great. And for just under $10 a month for an annual subscription, I think it's great value, but Skillshare are actually offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description below two months of free Skillshare Premium. So definitely check that out for free and get started right now. I think it's a great platform and it's a really good way to learn a new skill. Speaking of learning new skills, let's get back to the move assignment operator and STD move. As always, the best way to show this is gonna be with an example. So let's dive into the code from last from the last episode where we looked at move semantics in general, and let's upgrade our string and entity class to be able to handle move assignments. And we'll also be talking about STD move while doing that since that's an important part. So this is the string class from the last video and here's our entity class as well. Let's first talk about STD move and what it does. I'll actually use string as an example here just because we seem to have this kind of, we, we have two classes, we have string, we have entity, and entity is like an extra level of interaction. Entity itself, in fact, is an example showing how to use string, which is the real thing we're interested in moving. So what happens here when we decide to actually take in a string as a temporary here is we're using std move. And this is from the last video, we had to use it because this was a way for us to move this name temporary, which we're providing over here into this kind of more or less permanent spot for it to live in. If I simplify this by writing it over here, I'll create a string and I'll just set it to hello over here. So now I have a brand new string. What happens if I want to move it into here? Maybe this is the destination for my move. Well, I could assign it like this. However, what that's doing is copying the string into this new destination variable, of course. So what do I do if I want to specifically move it into this new variable? Well, I have to make it into a temporary because that's what the move constructor takes, right? If we look at the string constructor here, we have this one, which is our move constructor. This takes in an R value reference, which is a temporary object. So in other words, it's really simple. I have to make it use this constructor because this little blob of code here is what actually steals the resources from other. So in other words, that's the thing that actually does the move. So in order for it to use that constructor, I need to actually make sure that this string, this hello string becomes a temporary now. And how do we convert from one type into another generally in C++? We cast. So what I could do is I could cast this to be a string temporary like this. And what's happening here is it's now constructing a new string 
with a constructor that takes in a string R value reference here. So in other words, this is the same as if I had just written code like this, because of course that assignment operator is just doing an implicit conversion and call into this specific string constructor. So this is the code that I end up with. I'm now moving this string into this new destination. However, this is a little bit, uh, well, it's not the most elegant way of doing this. And it also doesn't work with every single type. For example, if we just had something that was auto and the type couldn't be deduced by ourselves writing the code statically like this, it's just not, not, a, not a great way to actually write code like this. So what we do instead is we use a slightly more flexible function that basically at compile time figures out what type is coming in. And that function is called svmove. So what this is, is just a utility function provided to us by the standard C++ library that will basically do what I just did, but in a slightly more elegant and flexible way. If we hit F12 over here in Visual Studio to, to get to it, you can see what's actually happening here. It's a const expression. It returns a remove reference T type of TY, and you can see there's that R value reference here. So it takes in an argument here, and it will actually return that double reference for us, but it does so in a nicely templated way and it will work properly with all types, including const and all of that stuff. So instead of doing what I did, you should use std move. And it also looks a little bit more elegant in my opinion, because it also gives a little bit of context as to what's going on. In this case, we're moving this string into this destination. Now I wanna emphasize here that it doesn't really matter how you write this code. I could just have an assignment operation going on over here. The thing is we're creating a new object here. This is not a move assignment that is taking place here. Because as you can see, we've got the variable type out front here and then the variable name, this is a brand new object that is being constructed. And as such, it will actually use the move constructor. Now this leads into the move assignment operator, which is what I talked about. An assignment operator, which I don't think we've covered in general in the C++ series, so that's definitely something that we'll do soon. But the assignment operator only gets called when we actually assign a variable into an existing variable. So in other words, if we now wrote something like dest equals string or something like that, or more specifically std move string to actually move it, in this case, what would actually happen is the assignment operator would get called because this is already an existing variable. Don't forget that an operator is really just like a function. And so when you actually call the equals kind of operator here, which is the assignment operator on an existing variable, it's kind of the same as if you just had like a little assign function and did something like that. Clearly this is happening on an existing variable, whereas over here, like it wouldn't really work because we're creating a new variable. So let's go up and define this assignment operator. So a regular assignment operator is something that we'll save for a, a different video, of course, because this is about the move assignment operator, but basically it's going to be very, very, very similar to the move constructor. So this is gonna be a good starting point. What I'll do is I'll just copy all of this stuff here and then I'll go down here and write string reference. So this is gonna return a string reference. We'll write operator equals, which is our assignment operator. And then it's going to take in that temporary object here. We'll also mark it as no accept. I'm gonna paste in all of our code here. And for, for the most part, that is basically it. However, there is one very important thing missing here. What we're doing is we're not actually constructing a new object like we were in the move constructor. We're actually moving another object into ourselves, into this current object. So clearly we need to actually overwrite the current object because the current object might have some memory allocated. And obviously if we just do this, if we just set mdata equal to another pointer, we've created a memory leak because there's no way for us to actually delete that old data. So what we need to do is first of all, delete our current data because we're about to move another object into ourselves. And then we can reassign all of our variables and also make sure that the other object is left in a valid state. So this is basically the most important thing that we can add. Now, typically in assignment operators, you also want to make sure that this object, that this current object is not equal to another object. So in other words, if we try to do something somewhat silly, such as assign destination to itself using something like this, right? Or I guess more specifically, we'd have to put it into here. If you try and do something like this, then this will not really work because obviously what we're doing here is we're deleting data and then we're just reassigning everything. I mean, what's gonna, what, what's gonna end up happening is we just delete the data and we've lost the data and that's it. Size will still be kind of correct though, 
So it's in, in general, it's just gonna mess everything up. What we could do, and specifically the right answer here, is to just not do anything in this case, because if these objects are equal, then there's no moving necessary. I mean, you're trying to move this object into itself. It's already there. There's no moving necessary. And the way we would typically implement this is just by saying, if this equals other, just like that. And if you do something like that, and specifically does not equal is what we want, if you if this is not equal to other, so in other words, these are in fact different objects, then nothing needs to be done. And we can just return this, which is a reference to the current object. So in other words, we only do the move if they're not equal. If they are the same object literally, then we don't need to do anything. If they're different objects, but the data is different, you still need to do the move because you're still moving some other object into yourself. So this isn't really like the assignment operator where you're doing a copy and if the data happens to match, you don't need to do anything. So you still need to do it and it's very easy to just implement a little, a little guard that does something like this. So there we go. That is a complete move assignment operator. Let's test it out. So what I'll do is I'll make, um, and to actually make this work, we do have a default constructor for string, which is good. We're going to kind of ignore the entity class for this example, I think. And what I'm going to do is basically come over here and I'll make a string here called, well, this will just, just be like our first string. I'll just call it apple and I'll set it equal to apple. Then I'll make another string called our kind of destination, which is just going to be an empty string here. And then what I'll do is I'll try and actually assign destination to be apple. Now, obviously this is gonna cause an error here because we don't have an actual copy assignment operator. So what we need to do is make sure that this is wrapped in a move, otherwise it's not even going to compile. And what should happen here is we should move the contents of Apple into destination and also leave Apple in a good state, in a valid state. So let's print the value of both of these. I'll print Apple dot, I'll call Apple dot print and then destination dot print here. And I'll also do so after we do the move and we'll see if the values have basically switched. So in other words, since we're stealing everything from Apple now, it should be left with nothing and uh, we shouldn't get any crashes or anything, obviously, upon destruction. Okay, so, and there's some other stuff going on here, so I'm gonna quickly get rid of all this other uh, noise. Okay, so we have created, then we, we have Apple, and this is, I just realized that what I should also do is make sure that I'm actually printing uh, the value of these variables, or rather the name of these variables, because at the moment we're only seeing the actual values. Okay, so now if we run this, we create the object, apple is set to apple, destination is set to nothing at all, then we move it, and now apple is set to nothing at all, and destination is set to apple. So we've basically transferred ownership of that entire array of characters without doing any copying or any allocating or deallocating or anything like that, we've switched these two variables, which is really good and amazingly powerful. And that's it. You can see both of the objects get, get destroyed successfully, we don't get any crashes because in this case, the Apple destructor is doing absolutely nothing since it's trying to delete an array over here that is set to null pointer. And then the uh, the destination destructor is, is destroying our character successfully. So that is the end of the move assignment operator and SED move. So in summary, the move assignment operator is something that you want to include in your class when you include a move constructor, because of course it might be desirable to move an object into an existing variable. It's basically part of something called the rule of fifths. There's something called the rule of thirds, and then there's the rule of fifths, which basically just includes all the new move semantics things. We'll talk about that more in depth in later episodes of the C++ series as well. One more thing I quickly wanna show is that I did mention the difference between destination and the assignment operator versus if we had just used the constructor like this. Keep in mind that by using this operator, it is literally the same as if we had written dot operator equals and called it like a function, which is why clearly that would not work here because we're not actually calling the assignment operator. We're just, we're just constructing a new string that happens to use a temporary value which is why the move constructor is being called. Whereas here, we're actually calling a function. So that's the that's an important distinction and one of the things that used to confuse me in the past, because as you can see, they both look like assignment operators, but they're actually different. This is the move constructor. This is the assignment operator. And STD move is what you wanna do when you want to convert an object to be a temporary. So in other words, if you need a, an existing variable to become temporary in the sense that you're basically marking it as hey, you can steal resources from this particular variable. This is what enables us to actually do the moves on an existing variable. 
If you're creating a new variable and it's like in a function parameter or in the move constructor or something like that, then it's already a temporary, it's fine. But if you've got an existing variable, like with this Apple example, that was an existing variable, you need to make sure that you use SVD move to basically convert it into a temporary. And then that way you can actually use the move constructor or the move assignment operator to take the resources from that variable and actually do the move. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you did. If you have any more questions about move semantics in general, hopefully these kind of past videos have cleared up the general complexity and the, I mean, I guess the, the fact that it seems possibly more complicated than it actually is. Hopefully all of that has been cleared up for you. But if there are still things that you want to know, leave a comment below and I will try and help you out as well as the community. But that's pretty much all there is to it. That's move semantics. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out the free two months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.